Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much. Now, I wanted to do in this video a little bit different. I've done a few Casios, I've done Seikos, I've done lots of Chinese homage watches, which I adore, but there's another brand I was very interested in doing a review on, and that was a brand which is British. It's a micro brand, and these guys here, Watch Gecko, they do primarily watch straps, but they do a lot very interesting watches. Now, I had a Pagani Design Chronograph Sport, and I was thinking, I want something that's similar, but isn't another homage. So I wanted something that was unique in design. Now, when I say unique, I mean, it's got something that isn't just a copy of someone else, i.e. the Rolex Daytona. Now, what's interesting about the watch in this review is it was designed in this country by a British guy and it looks beautiful. I was so drawn in. So I had to buy one and I wanted to do a review to see what's it like up close. Now the reason why I'm supporting British business is because my family have always been involved in business and over my shoulder here, I wanted to include just a little bit of a hint of this painting is something my dad did and it's not for business. He does, he's a creative guy. I think it runs in the family and I wanted to just think, well, we have a lot of creativity, a lot of amazing ingenuity in this country, which I'm so proud of. And I was thinking, why not support some more of British ideas, British innovation, British business? And that's why I was drawn to watch Gecko. And they don't know I'm doing this video. So I'm hoping when I send it to them, they'll appreciate the gesture. I'm not expecting anything. I'm just a big fan and I do support British business and creativity. And they are both of those things to a T. So without further ado, let's check this beautiful watch out. I recommend you check this link out guys. It's gekota.com in the About Us section. It's a lovely backstory, and it just gives you a bit of a taste of how it all began. And I really like this little story, and it's it's really nice how the name came about, how the team has grown to approximately 20 people, and it's a very vibrant young business, and you can really tell that by the constantly evolving nature of the product availability and the contemporary designs, but that everything feels like it's been done by people who really know their stuff when it comes to watches and accessories. And that's why I am personally a fan and why I would like more people to know about this fantastic British company. Now, what I'm gonna move on to next is give you a bit more of an idea of the other kind of watches that are available other than the watch that's in this review. So high quality British watches, they are designed in the UK and there's a real variety of watches available. Most of them are mechanical. You get a few quartz watches. Uh, these are mechanical chronographs, beautiful. And you've got Panda dials, very nice vintage th uh, feel to those. You've got the new Explorer. I really want to check that out because that just looks stunning. And the specs are all very good on these watches. You either get ETA movements, you've often got top grade loom, you get sapphire, you get lots of really good spec. And to finish off with, here's my watch and a few other variations. I went for this one. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at it. So this guys is the part of the video where I'm gonna run through the specification of this beautiful watch here. Now, I've already run through a bit of history behind Gekota, where you can find this watch and the other kind of watches that Gekota uh, sells. So you can get a good idea of the kind of range and they seem to have a lot of vintage inspired designs and I personally love that. So if you're after a, a contemporary vintage style watch, there's a lot of choice there, definitely. And I went for this because I do like a racing chronograph. So let's bring it up closer so you can have a much better idea of what you're looking at. So from the front, Straight away, you can see it has domed acrylic. Now, I love acrylic because it's that is actually a more vintage 
material to use. They used to use acrylic on most watches back in the day. Now, the benefit of acrylic is it has a different look and feel compared to sapphire. You can get this kind of dome quite easily and more cost effectively. But the good thing is if you get little micro scratches on it, Poly Watch is an excellent product I've used for many of my watches that have acrylic glass to get them out and polish it up real nice. It's very hard to crack and it doesn't shatter. It's incredibly robust and tough. So that's a positive. The bezel is ceramic. So that's another positive because that's the most vulnerable part of most watches. Apart from any domed glass, it would be uh, the bezel aspect. And this is ceramic, which is very scratch resistant. It can be prone to shattering. So if you're very rough with this watch, which I hope you wouldn't be, it would, um, it would probably shatter. So bear that in mind, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem for the average user. This is more of a light sporty dress watch. Now, I've covered those aspects here. Now moving on to the movement inside this watch, it's a Seiko VK64. Now that is a mecha quartz movement. And for those of you who don't know what a mecha quartz is, it's a combination of a quartz movement, which we know and love as a tiny little miniature piece of quartz, which when electricity is passed through it, creates a frequency which allows for timekeeping. It, it then turns cogs and it's effectively simplified the technology just to give you an idea, but the mechanical aspect of this watch is really cool because the mecha quartz, and that is for the timekeeping for the tachygraph or the tachymeter. Now the top button you press, and as you can see, it's got a, a lot more of a smooth sweep than you would normally get with a quartz watch. And it's got snapback. So when you reset your timer, pop straight back. That is really nice, really functional, but it's also fun to play with. Now it goes up to one hour of timing. And this dial here is for your 24 hours. So we can see here it's 8.26 in the evening. So that top line there would be midnight. I love this colorway. It's quite a British colorway because of the uh, red, the white and the blue. I do like that. That's really, really attractive colorway. And as I've showed you earlier on the website, they do have other colorways available, but I went for this because I'm quite patriotic and I found this one has the blue sunburst, which as you can see there is very nice. Uh, after I've done this specification part of the video, I will show you some outdoor shots and this watch looks so good, even in natural light. I also just show how much I love a sunburst dial. Check out this cheap Casio I've got. It's another really nice sunburst effect. Anyway, I got distracted, but you get an idea why I like blue sunburst. It just looks so lovely. So the other good thing is you have date wheel. It's very clear, very legible, and it's not in an awkward position. I find the layout, the designer of these watches, they're very talented. The layout is so well done. It's so pro well proportioned. You've got your Gokota logo, very crisp printed there at the, just under the 12 o'clock. And then you just says chronograph, which is obviously what it is. It doesn't say, oh, it's got splash resistance and it doesn't you know, waffle on about things that are irrelevant. It is a Gokota. It's a chronograph. That's all you need to know. And it has a well integrated date wheel and all the, Numbers around the bezel are really clear, well printed, very crisp, beautifully made. Now I understand these watches, although designed in the UK, it's from a UK based business, etc. etc. The watches are made in China, but as we know from if you look at any one of the videos, they are extremely good at making very good watches for a very reasonable price. And many, many products, including many watches, are made in China. So I've covered the aesthetics that you can see on the front, and I'm going to show you now a photo clip I took of the Loom, which is BGW9, so quite a bluey colour, so I'll just pop that up now. As you can see, it's, it's pretty strong and it holds out well, and it's uh, loaded in there, and, and especially good on the hands. As you can see, it's got a nice big pip on the hour hand, and then the sword hand, I think that's sword, correct me if I'm wrong, that's really nice. And the indices that which are applied has enough loom in there to make it clear. So when you have poor light conditions, it's very easy to take a glance at this watch. Quite common with these kind of watches, chronographs is, they can be a bit complicated and fiddly to look at and they, they don't 
have that ability for you to just quickly have a glance and tell the time. But these, this design, because it's so well thought out and it's very cohesive, it's very clear to read the time. So finishing wise, we've got brushing all on the side and the bottom, and you've got the lovely Gakota engraved in there. And there's only a hundred of this colorway available. And I've got number 47. So that makes it feel a little bit special, you know. It's quite nice to say I've got only one of a hundred of this color. So if you want one of these, you better get on their website and snap it up because it's nice to know that they've, they only do sort of sprint runs and that's what they call, you know, when they do a, a batch, if you will. Because it, it's nice that, you know, this hasn't just been churned out by the 11T bazillion and there's, there's so many of them out there. It's nice to feel like you've got something, even though this is approximately 200 pounds, give or take, depends where you buy it. I recommend you get it from Watch Gecko because you can have the exquisite customer service. Um, and I swear to God, they haven't told me to say that. They, uh, <laughs> I swear to God, they, they, I've bought so much stuff from them and their delivery times and their communication is outstanding and um, they deserve recognition for that. The, um, it's all part of the buying process, what you're buying into and supporting British business as well uh, for the design and the ingenuity that's gone into the, the process of let's get a watch into the marketplace that is not like a carbon copy of anything else. That's why I love this brand. And I feel special when I wear this watch. Now, what also is nice, it comes in their own Zulu Diver. It's one of their sub brands, the more sporting products such as the uh, dive straps, rubber, NATO, etc. This is a sailcloth and is perfectly appropriate for this watch because it's got the little perforated holes, which adds to the feel of it being a racing watch. And it's incredibly comfortable, light, and is extremely good on hot days because it doesn't feel like a sweaty mess after a hot day. It's so comfortable and breathable. I recommend sailcloth to anyone. And what I'm gonna do to show you how versatile this kind of watch design is, is I'm gonna pop it on this, also from Watch Gecko. This is their Gekota range. Gekota is their leather straps. Zulu Diver is their sporty straps. So if you wanna dress this watch up a little bit more, you've got an option here, a bit of suede. Obviously it's not something you would wanna get wet too often. So if you wanna make this more of a sporty dress watch, and because it's vintage inspired design, you could pop it on a vintage style strap. So I'll just quickly put that on. Wow, look at that. That really does look good on that strap, I must say. Gorgeous. Really suits it. Ah! I'm not gonna edit that out. That's just me being lazy with the spring bars. So anyway, back to this original strap before I make any more silly mistakes. You've got the idea, it's a versatile watch. You can really jazz it up or down with your strap choices, which again, I recommend you get from where you got the watch from. Now, what I need to discuss with you now, because I haven't actually talked about anything else with regards to the measurements of this watch, because some of you go, well, how big is it? Is it gonna fit my 48 inch wrist? Well, let me help you out, I've got my Excellent gizmo, which of course I only use for measuring watches, nothing else. Now, this, what am I doing? It's easier if I do it this way. There we are. Give or take a nanometer, it's 40 mil, which is a really sweet spot for a watch size. I mean, 38 would be too petite, 42 would look a bit too gawky for this kind of watch. 40 is a sweet spot for this kind of design. It really does have a neatness about it. Thickness, about the thickness of a chocolate digestive. Well, I eat two at a time. So uh, 12.8, which is relatively slim, but again, in proportion, lug to lug, you're gonna need to know that. About 47, sorry, I'm being lazy. It's not a long watch. It's just really well proportioned. And it's a 20 mil lug width, which is great for so many chap, uh, strap changes, lots of choice. Uh, weight wise, I'll get my, uh, Chef scales out. I can't believe I haven't weighed this already. It's so light. 70, 67, 68 grams. 
it's changing weight as we look at it. How is that possible? So um, yeah, it's a light watch. Weighs about as much as this. So it's light. I think that helps because it's a quartz. It hasn't got a solid lump of metal movement going around in there and a rotor and all that gizmo. So it's really good for um, feeling lightweight and comfortable. It's a great everyday watch or it could be a weekend watch. I'd say it's a bit more of a weekend watch. Chronographs are often weekend warriors, bit of fun. You can dress it up or dress it down. So I think I've run through everything. I hope I haven't missed anything out. Been fairly thorough. Talked about the movement. Water resistance. You can wear it in the shower if you like, but I wouldn't take it diving. Wear a dive watch for that. It does have a screw down crown. And it does have a G on there. So it's easy to miss these lovely little details, but the finishing is very good, extremely good. I can't find any flaws. There's no fluff or dust under the uh, dial, which is one of my biggest bugbears, biggest hates. I'm like, the dial is the main thing you always look at. I don't like bits under there. This doesn't have any bits. It's very nice, unless you can spot it in the camera. I don't think my camera's that good. And um, yeah, I would really recommend you check out more of their range. My first experience with the Gikota watch has been extremely positive and I will be buying more. I actually really want to check out their Explorer because I don't, there's something not quite right about the Rolex Explorer, I think. I know people say it's a, oh, it's a Grail watch, it's perfect. Well, there's some aspects about it I don't like. I think it's a little bit too many shiny parts on it. I like the fact that the, the, the Explorer that Gikota do looks a little bit more brushed effect all over, which I think as a, for a tall watch, you don't really want too much polish on it. So that's why I'm interested in their amazing version of a historic timepiece, their own interpretation. It doesn't look like a knockoff, but it looks like an Explorer watch. So I'm really excited to check that out as well. If you guys are too, let me know because, and also let me know if you if you have checked their website or if you have bought and had a good experience with any of their other watches, I would love to know because my first experience has been extremely positive and I'm, so glad I got to share that with you guys. And I'd like to finish this review and uh, by doing a little bit, oh my God, there's a hair there, that's terrible. What I'd like to do to finish this review, I'm gonna show you some nice little outdoor photos and some wrist shots, etc. So you can get to see it in all its splendor outside. So here we go. Thank <laughs> you.